thank you guys all for being here. What's it like watching a movie about yourself, Joe? <laughs> Learning? Yes. How so? It gravels on it. Well, I didn't know at the time how much I meant to the movies, but I know I do. You let them know, right? Love you! And, and what, what made you trust this guy to make a film about your career and your life? How's that work? His attitude. Um, Mr. James Gattos, or St. James. St. James. Shamusa showed me um, the better side to creation. And he would come at different times in my life, I remember, and ask me some wild questions, man. <laughs> And uh, but now I know why I've seen for ten years of him making this movie. That's how long it's been. Every year I would ask him, "Well, James, when's the movie coming?" Out? <laughs> <laughs> and he would tell me, "In a few more months, <laughs> in a few more months." And this went on for ten, ten, ten years now. In a few more months. Hey, well, well, we didn't have an ending five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that you that you took the um, the big leap of faith and went and went and asked for help was you know, the cherry on, on top that was was the miracle. So that uh, yes, sir. it's not over. So, James, how did you first become aware of Joseph and his music and? And was it Bad Brains, was it Human Rights, was it a solo project? How did you even become aware of him? Um, I was actually um, drawn into reggae. I, I didn't really know it, it much about Bad Brains. <clears throat> and being from PG County, right outside of D.C., um, the reggae-matic vibe just kind of grabbed a hold of me when I was young, 14, 15. And I had a lot of older friends, and they took me out to go see him at uh, the Red Sea on 18th Street, this Ethiopian restaurant. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was scary for a 14 year old, you know, little boy. And uh, you had the ID? You didn't, you didn't need an ID. You didn't need an ID. But um, I went and saw that show where there was only maybe, you know, a, dozen, a couple dozen people there. And I remember seeing him, in the, you know, sitting at the bar. And um, after that show, I just I bought as many records as I can, and then I found the brains, and then you know I was turned on, and thank God I was because the lyrics and the music are just you know they're incredible. They change people's lives and they inspire people to do better, and um, and that's I mean, that's that's what it was all about for me. So for, you know, a few people have asked, um, explain the title. Finding Joseph I, and where that came from. Um, you know, my understanding about the, the origin of it is that you were a writer, and you were working with a skateboard magazine, and you, which album was it that you were, it was around, it was, it, um, it was, it was the, one of the Megaforce records. Yeah, it was 2007, Build a Nation. Right, and right. you wanted to do an interview, right. and so you were given sort of, here's the day, here's the location, and I'm going to yeah. go interview HR. So lead into how finding Joseph I came about. Um, well, you know, I knew Joseph from the from the record, the credits on the records, like the Rock for Life, Joseph, you know, but never really understood it. And um, when I when I found him, I went to that warehouse to interview him, which was um, pretty shocking. Which was in Baltimore, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty shocking for me. Um, and then to find to find them there, and then um, you know, once I talked to a lot of people, you know, they referred to him as Joseph, you know, or Joe, or whatever, you know. So I kind of just dived more into finding out what that was all about. <clears throat> so that's kind of you know, the title didn't take shape till later on, you know, down the line of working on the project. Now, Joe, it, it, a punk rock, hardcore, reggae. In those worlds of music, you don't really hear about people being rock stars, right? But there are people that refer to you as a rock star. Do you feel like a rock star? No, I don't. 
<laughs> so, so what's, what's your purpose with music? What's it all about for you? What, what does music allow you to do? My life. I'm sorry? My life. Your life. <laughs> and you still consider yourself a religious person, yes? Oh, yeah. That's where Gary comes in. Dr. Mm -hmm. No. Who's here, by the way? Yeah. yeah. We're glad to see Gary feeling well as well. So, so what is religion, spirituality, what, what role does it play in your life? How does it help your life? Well, um, the way it helps my life is through focusing and having a destiny and, and having a quality about that destiny. That was the life. Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling these days? Well, I'm doing much better. Mm -hmm. Feeling much better. <coughs> Why don't you tell us, and we've got to give a little shout out to uh, HR's wife, Lori, who's here as well. Yeah. That's a lot of shout outs at these events. Well deserved. Um, how has you know, being with Lori helped you through a lot of these last few years? Well, I had met many women in my life, many sisters, <laughs> but she was the first one that took my different ways serious, mm -hmm. and different uh, lifestyle serious. To her, she didn't see it as joking around, but to me, it was just, I'm gonna tell you, it was just, a, a, a little side of humor to it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make people <coughs> happy and laugh and be free. Just free up, you know? For sure. <laughs> I got a question for James. And, you know, this film covers a lot of different aspects of Joe's life. So it's career, it's life, it's a lot of struggle going on. And in the end, you know, you're getting, a, a, I don't want to say happy ending, don't take it the wrong way. Um, but, but there's a positive direction going on here. Did you have a goal for the film? Like, I'm just going to document this and let's see where it goes. Or I hope to be able to represent a positive, you know, ending to this somehow. Like, did you have a goal for the film? Um, I wouldn't say a goal for the film. I would say a goal for my brother, you know? I just wanted to see Joe get better. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I was working on a film and my feet were already in the water, so I, I really couldn't get him out. And it wasn't really about making the movie. It was, you know, um, we really only shot, you know, as much time as I spent with him, we didn't really shoot that much, you know? And um, I didn't know what the ending was, you know? So um, I'm glad it ended up where it was. And I think that it's some serious, you know, some straight up serious things that are going on in society with, with addiction and mental illness. And we all have to be more conscious of what we see and um, be more loving and understanding. And, um, you know, um, I just love Joe with all my heart, you know, and he's helped me out more than, I mean, I, I just, it's hard to explain, you know, what I've been through myself and how Joe's impacted my life and where we are at today. And, um, you know, my hats are off to you for listening to the people that love you and, um, and taking that big, you know, that big step. And, you know, we all just, we, we just want to see you more comfortable than we just, I want to see you happy, and um, I'm, I'm I'm happy that you're on that road. You know that you're that you're that you're that you're trying, and and you know we all have our character defects. You know we all have our our, our things, and it's, oh, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Perfection sitting there. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, thank you, Joseph. Thank you, brother. you know the common denominator here is we're all here because of your music and what about music moving forward in the future here well um, it's really up to Anthony 
would whatever, whatever time he found. No pressure, him. Anthony. <laughs> it's up to him. He, 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 he hit the ball. Cracked that egg right where it needed to be on the frying pan. <laughs> and, uh, and he would mm -hmm. tell me, for years, he would tell me that I had an influence on people. And him and Gary were the only two people that I could trust. Earl and Daryl didn't say a word about it. <laughs> they didn't want to say uh, what Anthony and Dr. New were saying to me. And I was, don't give up, period. Don't, just don't give up. PMA. And then one more. I mean, do you, do you see a time when we would see you singing for the Bad Brains again? Oh, yes. Oh, Woo! Do it, dude! Good. I'm calling the papers. Um, first, I said we'll never play again. But now I, I received a call from Doctor No, and the call was positive, and he said let's get back together. And I'm, I'm saying, wow. Um, anybody have any questions? Right here. I'm for Joseph. Um, I was wondering uh, why you agreed to do the documentary. What was your purpose for doing it? Everybody hear the question? Yep. The purpose for doing this documentary. Well, I think he wants to hear from you. Like, I probably just want you to be okay with it. <laughs> you probably didn't have a choice because the guy was there with the camera. So. <laughs> well, the main reason was because I heard a calling from the Lord for me to do it. I have asked him every year to make a way, and he finally said, yes, I want you to do this. And that's when they, they gave me a call, Gary gave me a call, and he said, okay, cool. All right, other questions? Right here. I promise we'll get to you guys too. Uh, first of all, I'm just honored to be here with you. I've been, I first heard your music in 1987, and the top of my head flew off. And um, I just wanted to know from you this incredible journey that you have been on and then this moment that we're talking about uh, where you decided to ask for help. Uh, I find fascinating. For me, I had a moment and now I see somebody else who had a moment. And I just wanted to hear from you, from, your, from you. How did you know that moment was happening? in any way that you care to talk about it. And I just want to thank you for everything you did. <coughs> How did I know that it was happening? How did you know it was time to ask for help and, and that change that sort of rebirth that happens is going from one life to the next? Mm, it has a lot to do with my wife. Yeah. She was strong home in my life. <coughs> and uh, she asked me if I would be willing to stay with them this time and not quit, not give up. And I said, well, you know, I, I think so. I do want to deal with them again. And so we started believing in the band again. I had started asking Anthony to help me out because I didn't want to see the warehouse is my only place that I could live. And so we got a little apartment, a little pad. And uh, every month I would give Anthony a call <laughs> and ask him to help us monetarily, and he would. And he laid down six, seven hundred dollars every month for, I'd say about, for about maybe eight, ten years. And then one day he came, he outright showed me, well, you know, HR, you're going to have to do it because I'm, I'm now trying to get, the, get the funds for my life to be straight. And so um, I then took it upon myself to work with the 
with the director of the film. I told him that he would be the first one to <coughs> get the real me down on film and in the book. Then uh, I met Howie. We met at the local restaurant, and he started telling me about England and London and all these different states and everything. So <coughs> I, I decided to give it a try. Not give it up, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Right there. Hi. My name is Mike. I have a question for <coughs> Joe. Uh, where do you call home now? Oh, well, we moved to Philadelphia. Lori got the chance to be a manager of her own herbalistic healing type of living. And they told her, well, she'd be getting a chance in, in her monetary vibe. And so she wanted to live in Philadelphia. And I said, okay, well, we'll move to Philadelphia then. <laughs> and she did a whole lot of work. And I could tell, and I saw her feet. I could tell she had been walking around for years looking for me. <laughs> 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 now, you, you said in, in Washington, D.C., you thought that you had met Lori before. Yeah, I remember meeting her when she was a little girl. And she had on a cowboy outfit. But she said she had on cowboy pants and cowboy shoes. And she said, uh uh, that's not, that wasn't me that we really saw. That was somebody else. <laughs> Got some more questions? Right here. I'd like to ask Joseph, we've just seen that you've lived a very interesting life and been a lot of places. What, what have you learned? What's the most important thing that you've learned? The most important thing I've learned is not to be afraid to show people and to tell the audience that they are important to me. And uh, so that's, that was it. All the way in the back. There's two of you next to each other, so you can find it out who goes first. I have a question for James. You spent 10 years of your life working on this film. Um, how, did your, how did your family feel about all the time you were spending on Oh, boy. <laughs> so this would be a good time to say hello to Sheila, Sheila. James' wife, oh. who gets some love for uh, putting up with 10 years of filmmaking. She's outside, so she's not going to get this, but there's two kids in the you know, room. It's, so. it's definitely a sacrifice. It's a lot, of, a lot of sacrifice to try to do something like this, you know, um, working all day and sitting in front of a dark in a dark room staring at a screen for hours on end while your wife's watching bravo yelling at you like what are you doing but um yeah it's just 10 years was worth it you know um it was a it's a grassroots thing and you know it's just a labor of love it was a collaboration to make this film it wasn't a big budget or anything it was an idea and people like Jeff Schmally, who shot a lot of the footage over here, he used to shoot The Wire in Baltimore. Yeah. Steve Taz is behind me, who the title is Openers here, who did the bunch of graphics, um, and some people who created music. And it's just a lot of people coming together to try to um, make a movie. And that's why it happened. It just it, It's a labor of love, and that's exactly what it was. Some people have started asking about the music in the film and if maybe there's going to be a soundtrack because there's some some score that came about in an interesting way that's in the film, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, um, Miguel Happel, who's in the movie, uh, used to play with Brad and Sublime and started Long Beach Dub All Stars, and he was working on a movie, or working on a, pardon me, he was working on an album with Aaron Owens, who used to play in Hepcat from Long Beach, and he, on uh, God Rest His Soul, passed away last year, and they had an unfinished album, so he wanted to honor Aaron and HR with um, with the music, so you know he, he gave us a lot of music to use. Right on. Got some more questions. Mina Caputo from Life of Agony. Uh, I want to tell you that I'm sure 
I could be, speak on behalf of the whole room that you're one of the most incredible, fearless, and, and beautiful souls that has ever graced the punk rock, hardcore, raga music scene. And I saw you with HR about maybe 15, 20 years ago uh, at the Delancey, and you hugged me, and I was just wondering if I could get another hug. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> love you, love you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yes. Uh. We love you too, Mina. We got some questions. We got a few more. What that last one in the back, right? for me was seeing and reading this book and seeing this film. Yeah, we were just in Los Angeles and we went saw Ross Michael and Banks and a lot of those people and it was a lot of love in the room and it was beautiful. Okay, yeah. I think we have time for one more question right, right. here. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, um, been a really big fan for a really long time, so you know, a lot of times with Bad Brains and Human Rights over the years, always been digging and uh, like just blown away by the message of positivity that you always have throughout all these different things. And watching the movie, you see like all the different kind of travels and walking the million miles in those shoes and stuff. You know, all the different trials and tribulations, and you see, I guess, you know, in this day and age, a lot of people like to talk about you know, their perspective of what you should be today. Uh, anything to say, you like, to that aspect? Like, you're just living your life trying to spend a positive message and make an impact on so many millions of people. Uh, do you address that, or you just keep the positive thing going? And Well, you know, brother, for me, it was being able to never give up and just keep on trying. Keep the faith and you'll soon see yourself reborn. You're a better person. And a better person can help you to do the things you've always wanted to do. That's, and that better person is known as the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord will come into your life and help you to be a better man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have to wrap up the Q&A. Before we do, I um, want to say thank you to John and uh, Nighthawk Cinema who had us here. Thank you, John. Uh, I would like to say uh, thank you to uh, the wives of these two men, Lori and Sheila. And, and James Kidd's are here. And um, I would like to say a big, big thank you to James Lathos, who just conquered this incredible story and film. And I'm just proud to, to even get to talk to this guy about his movie, to be honest with you. Um, and naturally, Is also... Is this okay? How old are you? I'm 41. Fuck yeah. Well done. Well done. It's a good thing he's sitting. No, old, old soul. Old soul. Old soul. He's a little grayer now. Um, but, you know, thank you to everyone who's here, everyone who helped make this film uh, possible, everyone who helped make the book that James and I have done together about HR possible, which is going to be uh, for sale out there, and HR and James and I are going to be out there signing some books. But most of all, we got to give a big, big hand and a big thanks 
to the greatest of all time, the GOAT, HR.